Coming up on Avant Technology Insights with Ken Presti. It's bringing together the networking tools that we've had and the security tools that we've had that have existed separately and converging them into one seamless service. We're talking about SASE. In a world where the delivery of IT security requires extensive expertise that is refreshed on a daily, if not hourly basis, SASE, or Secure Access Service Edge, is a cloud-based alternative that can deliver a variety of features, including next-generation firewall, secure web gateway, managed detection and response, and more. SASE is nothing less than a convergence of networking and security functions, and we'll take a look at exactly what SASE is and how it might benefit your enterprise network. Welcome to Avant Technology Insights. I'm your host, Ken Presti. The link between solving business challenges and cutting-edge technologies has become tighter and more complex than ever before. In this podcast series from Avant Research and Analytics, we help enterprise decision makers sort through the business case, the value, the challenges, and ultimately the bottom line of technology adoption. So listen to us at your desktop, take us in the car, tune in from the commuter train, or download us at the gate. You'll find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google, as well as in more than 25 countries listening to us right now and available across the globe. My guest today is a veteran industry analyst specializing in SD-WAN, IT security, and a variety of related and adjacent technologies. He's currently a technology evangelist for Cato Networks, which has been instrumental in the early advance of the Secure Access Service Edge, better known as SASE. Please welcome to the program, Dave Greenfield. Dave Greenfield from Cato, thank you very much for joining us here today. Uh, SASE is kind of an interesting new place in the technology field in IT security, and I've been looking forward to this interview to get a little bit of a deep dive into what it all means. Let's start, if you don't mind, by talking about how IT security in the cloud is different from IT security in the data center. Can you, can you unpack that for us, please? Um, legacy networks have been built primarily around point solutions. We've seen uh, in, uh, individual appliances, firewalls, routers, what have you, have come out. Um, companies have purchased uh, specific services for connecting those devices and connecting those sites. Um, and that's pretty, been, that's pretty much been typical of uh, legacy networks for, oh, I don't know, more than a decade now, um, if not longer. Um, what SASE is doing for us, that's SASE, by the way, stands for Secure Access Service Edge, um, is it's bringing together the networking tools that we've had and the security tools that we've had that have existed separately and converging them into one seamless service. Okay, so how is this different, if it is, from a bundle of security-focused VNFs, virtual network functions? Is this kind of the Great same question. thing as, as that? Great, great um, question. Yeah. So VNFs are part of the NFE architecture, right? That was, I guess, right. it was developed by the ITU initially, um, going back some time. And and the idea of a, of a VNF, just like you said, is that we are going to deploy these effectively our virtual appliances. Um, traditionally, you know, generally speaking, they're deployed at the customer site. Um, they run on. Uh, on top of a, of, a, of a UCPE, right? And they consolidate the functions of several different kinds of devices, appliances, into that one physical piece of hardware. Um, that's not what SASE is. SASE talks about the integration of all those functions into one seamless service. In the case of a VNF, you're still left with managing, deploying, testing, updating uh, uh, appliances, even if they are virtual appliances. And that means that you're left with all the operational overhead of those appliances that have come with, a, with, 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 the, with an appliance form factor. Um, so for example, right, uh, if you were to see a jump in branch office traffic that, you know, you have these VNFs that are running on a, on, on, on a CPE out at, uh, out, at, out at a branch office, and all of a sudden, you should see a spike in traffic. Well, if that spike in traffic is too high, you're going to be forced to, into an upgrade cycle, right? You're going to have to upgrade the appliance hardware and probably the, probably the, v, the VNFs as well to keep pace with the, uh, um, with, the in, in, with increased load that's being introduced on, on, on the appliance. Um, SASE 
by contrast, is talking about a cloud native service um, that would be unaffected by performance changes at the edge. You're using the scalability and the elasticity of the cloud to provide a integrated multi-tenant software platform to address the needs of the branch and other sites. That's a very long explanation for a, for a, for a short question, Jen. Ken, was that clear? No, that's fine. It was, a, to back? It, it was <laughs> no, it was quite clear, and it was a it was a short question, but it was kind of a detailed question. So let me let me try one thing here from my my relative. Um, my relative lack of, of technology deep dive experience in terms of SASE, would it be too much of an oversimplification if I were to call SASE a um, kind of um, VNFs as a service kind of thing? Is that the, the prime differentiator there? Well, well, you know, let's think about it this way, Ken. Uh, okay. You're familiar with Office 365? Yep. Right? Um, well, yep. Okay, you, you could have run... Um, ex, you know, an exchange server on your on your uh, on your site, right? We used to do that before we had Office 365, right? Um, what's the difference between an exchange server running in running in your in your private data data center and Office 365? Well, the difference. Okay, I see what you're driving at. Right. So yeah. in one case, ahead, you're continue. right. So in one case, you're managing a server, right? You've got your own discrete server. You're managing. You're responsible for it, and all the upgrades and the you know and, and the operational overhead that's involved with maintaining that. Uh, that mail service. And by the way, I am not an exchange server expert, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> but okay. I do understand infrastructure. And, and that model is exactly what SASE is bringing to us. That in beforehand, you were you would have spent resources maintaining, upgrading um, your, your, your email infrastructure, which you no longer have with a cloud service. And you can say this about any cloud service. Right, you know, same with Salesforce, same with with any other cloud application or cloud infrastructure you can imagine. You're replacing an on-premises infrastructure, a single tenant on-premises infrastructure, with a multi-tenant cloud scale infrastructure. Right, and when you move to the cloud, you've got all the benefits of the cloud, the elasticity. You know, it's just the resource consumption. It's a whole different kind of model than what you have in the branch office appliances. So. Gotcha. You compare it, you know, to bring it back to VNFs, right? With VNFs, you're still deploying individual VNFs for each customer. You still have to maintain them, right? You still have to upgrade them. You have to test them. Um, right. That's a lot. That's not mm -hmm. the case with a SASE platform. With a SASE platform, the operator or the company, actually the provider, in this case, Cato, has a cloud-native multi-tenant uh, software platform that converging that converges all the networking and security functions into one seamless experience. Okay, so if I'm an enterprise decision maker kicking tires on this, what should I be looking for in terms of the component parts of a SASE value proposition? And and to what extent can I mix and match and customize to my liking and things like this? You know, is this multi-vendor? Is it single vendor? Excellent um, question. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So the first, I guess the, the most basic question is, are you converging networking and security together? That's step number one, right? You know, and what that means is, do I get a full a full range of security servers, my next generation firewalling, my secure web gateway, my anti-malware, uh, my, my managed threat detection and response services, is all of that given to me, packaged uh, for me, um, along with the ability to have a, um, you know, to have uh, a, a predictable global uh, access. Um, at Cato, we've got a global private backbone that our customers have used to replace their MPLS networks, right? So that means they get SLAs. They they have a, they have latency SLAs on that backbone. Backbone. That means they have predictable delivery on that backbone. They have a global platform that's far more predictable or far more reliable than the open than the open internet. So those step number one: Are you converging networking and security to, uh, together? Um, step number two is the architecture. Is that convergence uh, done by a software platform that's been designed? Purpose built and designed for uh, for SASE, or is it a kind of a hodgepodge of devices that you've wrapped around a layer, um, uh, you know, a service layer around it that hides the complexity from the from the customer? And that's really really important. A cloud native platform is fundamentally different than a mix of appliances. Um, it's not just us that are saying it. Gartner brought that out very strongly in its report as well. Okay. 
So underneath it all, do I need MPLS? Do I need SD-WAN? What do I need to facilitate this from an infrastructure perspective? So, um, you know, let's let's talk about Cato for a second. I don't want to generalize to all SASE platforms. Okay. Um, I want to focus on Cato for a moment, but Cato very much is what you would think of as a as a paradigmatic of of, of the SASE infrastructure. What Cato does um, is we use um, um, SD WAN is one of our edges for connecting in resources into into the Cato cloud. So we have our SD WAN device, the Cato socket that sits at a branch office or a data center and brings those sites, allows those sites to connect to the nearest Cato POP um, point of uh, the point of presence. We also though have a remote access solution, a client or clientless access solution that connects your mobile or, or remote workers to the nearest POP. And we also natively connect in your cloud resources to the nearest Cato path, right? So we have these different ways of connecting in um, uh, your your various resources um, that comprise the enterprise into the Cato uh, uh, into the Cato infrastructure. Um, and by the way, we also allow you to establish um, IPsec uh, IPsec tunnels. So if you've got third-party devices, right? Um, uh, that you need to connect in, you can use you can use those as well. Okay, so we allow you to bring all that traffic to to the nearest Cato pop. Once you do that, you now are riding across the Cato global backbone. We today have more than 50 locations, 50 pops around the world. Um, on the Cato on the Cato backbone, we both have network optimization uh, optimization built in, so you see dramatically improved throughput. Um, as well as security security inspection, a full suite of security services. So you don't need to have local firewalls anymore. You don't need to deploy those across all your branch offices. They just connect into Cato and their traffic is being optimized and secured. The traffic comes in, uh, the optimizations and the inspections are, are, are performed and either it's sent out onto the internet or it's sent across the Cato backbone to the pop that's closest to the, to the destination. Exactly. Okay. How does all this fit? How does all this fit into a zero trust environment in terms Excellent. of, of uh, cloud security? Excellent. You know, we hear about zero trust a lot sure, these days. Sure. Go ahead. For sure. So, so zero trust network access or the software defined perimeter is fundamental to SASE. I encourage you to look at the Gartner documents um, and read them closely. You'll see that ZTNA is very much part of the way um, Gartner. Uh, views as SASE, and ZTNA is part of a part of Cato. So. Uh, one way to think about what we do is we're providing you with a global firewall, meaning that um, security policies are restricting you specifically to the resources that you're permitted to access. So um, we can determine whether you have access to specific sites, specific applications. Um, we're fully identity aware. So you can define your policies not just based on um, IP addresses, for example, um, but you can define your policies based on user identity, based on group. Uh, and that's not just on the security side, that's also on the networking side, right? On the networking side, you can actually define your, 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 your route policies as it were, your traffic policies based on, on, on user identity. So if I'm an enterprise decision maker and I'm looking at the uh, possibility of adopting SASE, what are some of the key factors that I ought to do in, that I ought, I ought to be looking at in the assessment process? And so and I'm, what should I be setting up? Wait, let me just finish. Mm -hmm. What should I set up in terms of being able to evaluate the success level of this on the back end? So let me just bring you back for a moment. When you look at remote access, then, and maybe this is a part of a part of the answer to your to your question. When you look at remote access, then you're going to you're, you need to be concerned about a scaling issue. How many users can I put on one VPN server, right? And usually I max that out at, very quickly. When I talk about large scale remote access, and then I need to buy more VPN, you know, invest more in my VPN server infrastructure. In addition, though, that once they connect, they still need their security, right? They still need to be protected. They need a full suite of, of security services. And on top of that, I end up backhauling much of my traffic across the internet um, back to that VPN server for, for that inspection, which further impacts performance. As far as criteria as to what to look for um, when you're evaluating a SASE platform, um, again, convergence is very important. Um, is it a cloud native platform or not? Also extremely important. Look at the look at the uh, at the infrastructure. What's you know what kind of backbone do they have, right? Um, 
is it is it regional? Is it only located within a particular region, or is it global? Or is it riding over the public internet? Huge, huge issue. Um, what about the the you know, the connectivity that you're getting? Is it some, Is it a backbone that connects with um, with the public uh, cloud service providers? So, um, is optimization built in? Um, all of those factors are are are, are very important. So much of what SaaS is about is an architecture conversation. It's the architecture that makes everything else seamless. And if you start using individual components in that architecture, it, it'll come back to bite you. It makes things much more complicated. We believe, not just us, but Gartner believes that over time, it makes things more expensive, um, makes things harder to manage, harder to deploy. Now, those, are, those are difficult things, perhaps, to see on a features table, um, other than to say, you really want to look for a seamless experience. And what is this going to do to my uh, to my spreadsheet? What is it going to do to my bottom line? Is the cost of ownership uh, advantageous compared to going without SASE? Or what? How do you how do you net that out? Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a that's a great question. I guess it's also a complicated question. Let's assume for a moment that we're talking about um, an enterprise today that has a global MPLS backbone, right? Um, mm -hmm. And there, you know, a lot of it depends on, on the kind of configuration that you're talking about. But we'll walk through that exercise for a moment. Um, so, um, it, you know, replacing your global MPLS backbone with Cato, um, you dramatically reduce not only your cost savings or your more like you optimize your costs. You get far more for for the dollar that you spent. Um, far more capacity, far more functionality. And we have numerous case studies that you can, you can go up on our, on our website at catonetworks.com and read that point to that. Uh, these are real customers talking about the concrete benefits they realized by switching from, uh, from MPLS to, to, to Cato. Um, in addition though, you gain a level of agility that you probably uh, you've probably never experienced and a level of operational simplicity that that you've never experienced before we pull your entire security infrastructure and network in infrastructure into one single management console so you've got a, an overall view into your complete network that you haven't seen before. if you haven't experienced it you really must it really is a change in the way we think about it, think about networking Excellent, excellent. Dave Greenfield, Technology Evangelist at Cato Networks, want to thank you very much for joining us today. Great conversation on a rapidly emerging technology, that being SASE-based security. Thank you for your time today, sir, and have a great rest of your day. And thank you, Ken. You've been listening to Avant Technology Insights with Ken Presti, featuring information and opinions on how key technologies can be leveraged to solve business problems. Avant Technology Insights is a service of Avant Communications, an IT decision-making platform for next-generation technologies. All opinions expressed are those of the guests and the host. For more information, please visit www.goavant.net. That's www.goav as in victory, For Avant Research and Analytics, this is Ken Presti.